Hi, this is Gareth Kentish and today's video is about Composer which is the free HTML editor that I am assuming you have downloaded from one of the links within the Auction Money Generator program. Once you have downloaded Composer you will have a folder on your computer called Composer and within the folder you'll see the program as seen here and what we want to do is to click on that program to access the editor. OK, so you're now in the HTML editor and what we want to do initially is to open up the sample listing HTML file that we downloaded previously within the program and to do that we click on the open icon here and we then find the sample listing file here from the HTML folder that we also set up when we downloaded that file. So if I click on sample listing and open, you'll then see that file displayed within the editor. Just recapping on what this HTML file is, it's a file that is aimed at promoting an ebook, in this case Cycle to Life, which has a number of um, images and logos and phot photographs and it also has links to my main eBay shop here and also to the sale that was mentioned earlier in the Auction Money Generator program. The information is also stored in a table of three columns long and four rows deep. So we've used the facility within the HTML editor to create the table and that actually gives us a structure to the page that we're developing. So how do we create this type of page for your listings? Well, we can start by creating a new page from scratch and we do that by clicking on the new icon in the top left hand side of the screen and you'll be given a blank screen shown here and you'll notice that the sample listing tab is still available to us if we click on the tab here. And what we'll do now is go into the new file to start working on the new listing. When I create a new page for my listing, I focus on the structure before adding text, photographs or links or whatever onto the page. So the first thing to do is to click on table, as you can see here. I prefer three columns and um, four rows, so I'll start by clicking the three columns here. And now that I have the table on the screen, I can then add text, for example, or photographs into each of these boxes and move the sizes of these cells by moving the cursor uh, that you can see along the, the top bar there. The way I'm doing that is I'm depressing the left hand side of the mouse and then moving the mouse backwards and forwards to change the size of the cells. So it gives me a lot of flexibility in sizing and also where I wish to position um, text and photographs and links. Okay, so let's put the theory to test and start adding text, images and links into the page. The first thing we can do is to put a header into the center cell. I've clicked here to see where I wish to locate that image and the way to do that is to click on the image button at the top of the screen by clicking here. You're then asked to find the image that you wish to insert. Click the browse icon on the right and I found the header image that I wish to insert. Click there, click open. You'll need to put an alternative text into the box here. Just type in header and press OK. Now apologies for the cheesiness of the image. I'm hoping that it proves that you can add any image into the file here. Okay, so I'm going to make this image a little bit smaller. So all I need to do is to just 
move the mouse to the left hand side, depress the left hand side of the mouse button and just move the cursor to the right and you can see here that the image is getting smaller and the cell is also fixing itself around the image perfectly for me and then if I wish to expand the third cell I can just move that out there like so and move this over here like so. So I've got a lot of flexibility in changing the size of the page and if I wish to center that image I would click on the center button here. As I said before this is similar to using a word processor. So I click on the center button there and we should see the image move into the center of the cell. Okay so I'll add a logo into the left hand cell here. Get rid of the word text. Again hit the image button Hopefully I'll find my logo in my folder. There it is. Yep, that's perfect. Click on that. Press open. I'll type in logo in the alternative text field. Logo. Press OK. You can see here it's a little bit big, but again I can use the mouse and depress the left hand side of the mouse to change the size of that logo. So let's just do that quickly moving it into the position that I want it to. So there I have the logo now on the left hand side. I could then add some more text in the third column or even another picture or logo. And then if I wish to add a new line, a new row, click the tab button and I then get given the next uh, row in the table. And in the middle cell, I might wish to put the um, main feature, if you like, of the product that I'm trying to promote in the listing. So let's assume that it is the ebook that we talked about earlier. Again, I've clicked on the image button, browse, type uh, there's a front cover. I'll put that into the center cell. I'll just put in here in the alternative text, front cover, press OK and I've now got the image there right bang in the middle of the page. I can of course add some text to promote this ebook in the same cell so let's just do that. A uh, fantastic ebook, let's just do that, fantastic ebook from your company. Press the enter button. It should be above the book now. Then if I wish to change the font and the size, I grab the text by depressing the left hand side of the mouse button and moving the cursor either left or right so it's highlighted in blue. Click the A button here, larger font size, make it bigger. Might make might make a change to the font also so let's go here uh, sorry let's just have a look where I can change the font size I might put in um, Ariel or Vidana let's just have a look again it's a bit like a word processor so I'm hoping this is all familiar to you click on Vidana might be a little bit too big move it back and I'm able to just mess around if you like with how I want that uh, cell to look. Now one thing I haven't done is shown you how to do links and I might want to insert a link in the left hand column here, link to my main eBay shop. So let's do that. And the way to do that is to grab the text again depressing the left hand side of the mouse and moving it along so it's highlighted in blue. I then hit the link button up the top there. And it's asking me now for an address if you like, a web address or URL. And what I need to do is to grab hold of the URL for my eBay shop. So if I go into my browser, I actually have my eBay shop already open. And you can see here where my uh, address is for my shop. I grab that again, Control C allows me to capture it into the computer memory. 
I then click back to my composer editor and insert the address into that box there by depressing control V and you can see there that the address has popped up. A recommendation here is to click this button here so when you do click on this it opens up a new page in the browser for the user. Makes a lot of sense because you don't lose track of the page that you're on. You will notice now that the link that we've just created is underlined in blue similar to what you would expect in a standard web browser. So we can now add to the linking capability within the editor by adding a link to promote the sale uh, that was mentioned earlier in the program. So let's combine the two things that we've learned, i.e. place an image into the cell here and then attach a link to the image that we've just added. So let's click on image and browse the folder, have a look at images and we'll promote these um, half sleeve cycle jerseys. Click on the image there, press open, type alternative text, sale in shop, click OK. There's the image, it's a little bit large, so let's reduce that by depressing the left hand side of the mouse key and moving it to the size that we want. The advantage of course of working in a cell in the table is that it enables, enables us to keep the image in the position that we want it on the page. So I'm just moving it to size. Happy with the size now. I might even just say click on the jersey above to see our fantastic sale etc etc so now I need to create a link on that image so just click on the image itself so it's highlighted as you can see then click on the link button at the top of the screen and I need to then place the address of the sale within the eBay shop and the way I do that is to jump to my browser I then go to my shop, find the sale, so click on my shop and go down and there is the listing here, let's have a look, happy with that and then I grab the address in the address bar as before and I've clicked on that highlighting the text in blue, pressing control C to store that address in the computer memory I then click back to the editor and control V in this field here and that then allows me to save that address in the box there. Press OK and I've now just added a link to that specific listing within my eBay shop. Hopefully now you're familiarizing yourself with some of the features within the editor um, and feeling confident in adding text, photographs, images and even links to your eBay shop and sales within the table, within the cells that you've created. If we flick back to the original sample listing, you should recognize now that there is a similarity with what page we're developing and the page that we've created here. One thing I might do, however, is to take away the borders in the page that we're developing my personal preference is to have a crisp background so what I need to do here is click on the table icon at the top of the screen click the table tab here where it says borders insert a zero press OK and you should notice now that the borders have gone Uh, just to recap then, we've learnt how to add a table which helps us define the structure of the page that we're developing. And in each of those cells, we're able to add 
logos, images, photographs, text, even links to our eBay shop and specific sales so that we can promote other products outside this immediate listing. And all of this has been done, of course, without knowing a single line of HTML code. Now, just to give you an idea of what that code looks like, if we click on the source tab down here at the bottom of the screen, then you'll see a load of uh, what I refer to as techno babble. And we don't need to concern ourselves, certainly at this stage, with what this really means, because we'll be working in the normal area of the HTML editor. All we now need to do, of course, is to save this file in an appropriate folder on our computer for future reference. And to do that, we click on the Save button. Name, type the name, we'll call it Test Page. Click OK. And we'll save it in the same folder as HTML stuff up here. Test Page, I'm happy with that. Click on Save and we'll come back and revisit this in another video. Thanks again, my name's Gareth Kentish.